Hi, this is Chef William Poole. I'm the owner of Wen Chocolates in Denver, Colorado. We're going to be showing a really nice process on making a chocolate sucre that you can fill with just about anything you want to. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, almond frangipan today, but we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, we're going to take the flour, pop that right in here, and this has been pre-sifted. We're going to put in our sugar, our salt, and our cocoa powder. Because this is a chocolate sucre, you want just an amount, small amount of cocoa powder. This is something I like to do by hand. I know that a lot of times we mix things with our mixers. It's all great and fine. I'm very tactile. I like to feel to see how the flour is doing. You don't have to necessarily come in and whisk this or sift it. Your hands are going to do the work for you. Really, really easy. When you get this done, you're going to want to put some cut up butter into here. Get all of that bad boy in there. All right. And this is something too, this is very cold butter. You're going to want to get in there with your hands and just break this up and mix it until you see something and feel something that resembles coarse cornmeal. This is rather important because you want all of that fat to be surrounded by the flour because you're going to be adding a little bit more fat in the form of egg yolks to this and you want to have a very tender pastry when you're done and this is going to help you do it. So get in there with your fingers and just keep it going. And this does take a couple minutes and this again you can throw this into a, uh, a Roboku if you want to or a food processor and just do a couple pulses. Again I like to do this by hand. I think this uh, stemmed from when I was a little kid I like to make mud pies so it was always kind of fun and this is just a little tastier. All right, now that you've got this into a coarse meal, we're going to add the egg yolks and the vanilla. And you can go ahead and take these and just add these together first. That's absolutely fine. Just pour all of this in there. Get in there with your fingers. Pour that in. Off to the side. And to keep your hands a little bit cleaner is just mix some of the flour over. And it is going to be a little bit messy but that's okay. And just keep condensing and squeezing everything together. And the dough will come together in just a little bit of time. And you're going to be able to feel this. It just tightens up really nice. And you can see some of the flakiness starting to happen. And we're going to want to gather this into a ball when we can and just knead it lightly. Uh, what can happen a lot of times is if you overwork the dough, you're going to develop too much gluten and you're going to be making a bread product as opposed to a nice tender flaky pastry. And as you can see, this is starting to come together. We're just going to work this a little bit more. And you can get in there with your hands. Just work it. All right, at this point, you can bring this out. You can see how this is holding together really well and it's cleaning off the bowl really nicely. All right, at this point, just give it a couple good squeezes and we're going to basically form this into a brick. And what we found in the kitchen is because we have limited space in our kitchen, we actually form this into a brick so that you can wrap them and stack them on top of each other. We make probably four to five of these a week. So we need all the space we can in the kitchen. So we make this a little bit smaller into a brick. All right, at this point, we're gonna wrap this and put this into the fridge to relax for approximately 30 minutes. You're gonna to wanna to chill your dough and then we'll show you how to roll that out. We've just pulled the uh, chocolate sucre out of the fridge. It's had time to relax for about a half an hour, and that's going to relax any gluten. So again, you have a very tender, flaky crust when you're done. Let's unroll this, and you can just break off a little part if you'd like to. A little bit of flour. And I'll press this out a little bit first. Dust your pin. And just make sure, now again, this, this can come apart pretty easy. 
this is always this is a good reminder just always 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 flour your surface that can get pressed in there I wouldn't work this too much but just enough to roll it out to the thickness that you would like we're just going to finish rolling out the pastry here and what I'm going to do is take one of our ring molds and this is something that any kitchen store would have they're relatively inexpensive but we found that it has a nice depth to it and a nice nice width that you can do an individual portion very easily and what I like to do with entertaining um, is give everybody their own little dessert uh, as opposed to just a big slab of cake or anything else out there I like to do individual things for people so we're going to take this little chocolate sucre just fold that right over the top and just slightly and lightly press that into the corners and recesses of your ring mold and you can kind of play with this chocolate uh, sucre a little bit it's a little forgiving it's really really nice once you've got this into the corners is go ahead with your thumb and just take off the top of there all the way around what I've found is uh, classically you can just roll across the top if you'd like to take care of it that way makes it a little bit quicker and then with your thumb or your finger is just get in there and make sure that you've got a really nice edge on the bottom that's going to hold more product anyway whatever you choose to fill with it and as soon as that's done that can go right there and we're done with this this will need to go back into the fridge to relax and we're going to move on to our almond cream the first thing we're going to do is add the butter, all that good butter, and the sugar. And we're going to cream this. You don't have to use a whisk. We're using the paddle attachment. And sorry about the noise. So let's get this going. We're looking for pale and fluffy. So we're just going to give this a moment to, uh, to go ahead and cream out. We soften the butter a little bit just so it'll incorporate the sugar a little bit easier. And I'm just going to crank this up one more. Beautiful. And once you've got this pale and light, we're going to add the eggs. And just a little bit at a time. What can happen if you put all the eggs in at once is they won't combine with the sugar. If you find that this gets a little uh, loopy, you can add a pinch of the flour if you want to, just to keep everything going so that uh, you don't have to worry about it rest of the eggs go in and beautiful we're gonna go ahead and shut this off now and do this and get rid of the paddle for a moment I want to show you something during the last processes let's back this up a little bit and we're gonna open this bowl up so that you can see this this is a neat part about this so you can actually scrape down with a spatula all of this goodness a little bit more of what we need to add which is the flour the salt and the almond meal we're going to add the flour and salt together that goes into the almond meal and we can actually just fold this by hand into the mixture make sure all of that is in there get these guys out of the way and we're just going to fold this in and you're looking for a mixture that is pipeable that's the uh, the fun part about this is we're going to pipe this into those chocolate sucre shells add some pears and bake them off and then you're gonna have something really incredible at the very last minute we have a little bit of caramel infused vodka it's got a little bit of smokiness to it it's like uh, something I think called campfire which is a really really beautiful thing and after this is done this is really really nice let's get this into a piping bag and show the rest of the process for this all right our frangipan or almond cream is ready to go we're going to pipe these into our chocolate sucre shells which we pulled out of the refrigerator and uh, they're just just about at room temperature we're going to fill our piping bag up and uh, here's our piping bag which is great you can get these at any kitchen store uh, they generally come in groups or bags of uh, 25 to 50 pieces they are relatively inexpensive and they are disposable which is great so let's fill this guy up and I just curled this down around my fingers just to keep it a little bit cleaner neat part about these guys is you can fill this up and then you've got a little bit of room to be able to squish this stuff down before you start to do that though take a pair of scissors snip off the end so that it creates an air escape so that you can just pipe this stuff all the way down give it a little bit turn 
so that your hands don't get messy. We're going to pull this in and you want to put enough frangipan or almond cream in and I just do it in a circle. You don't want to put too much in because this is going to puff up during the, uh, the uh, baking process. And we are almost done. All right, pears. This is the neat part. Is you can do a couple things with this. I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit. Bring in a cutting board and a knife. We have some beautiful pears. You have an option if you'd like to of poaching your own, and I think that's a video for another day. Today we've just chosen to use some canned have pears in a light syrup. You can do a lighter syrup if you want to. There's a lot of stuff out on the market that's very good for you, very fresh. We're just going to take some nice thicker slices of each of these and generally three pieces on each one is enough. You don't have to overdo it and we're just looking for a little bit of pear flavor right into the center. And with that caramel frangipan and that chocolate sucre, this is a really incredible taste. So let's just take these last pieces. I'm going to put these onto here. Got one more pair. We're just going to cut up enough to do the last two, and we're going to get these guys right into the oven, and we are ready to go. We have just taken these out of the oven, and uh, they were at 375 degrees for approximately 25 minutes. Now, you're going to want to check these during the baking process, things that will affect it. If they're too close together or too far apart or crowded on the baking pan, sometimes things in the middle will not bake to the best advantage, so you'll want to turn about halfway through the baking process to make sure that they're uniformly uh, caramelized and cooked. What we do with these after they've cooled off a little bit is we take some apricot jam and this can just be a commercial grade or you can go to your uh, local supermarket and pick some of this stuff up. We've heated it up with uh, the microwave and it's nice and hot. We're just going to glaze the top of all of these. What this does is it locks in all the moisture from the almond cream so that these won't stale out and you can serve them later in the day. But you want a good glaze on top of that. Let's do this guy right here. And make sure you get into all the cracks and crevices. This is rather important and that little bit of apricot lends a beautiful flavor to the rest of the ingredients here. The almond cream with that caramel vodka. You've got the chocolate sucre shell that's just decadent. And this is just a nice way to say thanks for stopping by after dinner. Now when these are cooled off they will uh, constrict a little bit and they're really easy to pop out of the mold. See how easy that is? It's beautiful. Got some plates right here. I'm gonna put that right onto there and that's our chocolate sucre and almond cream with pears.